Welcome to part three of three for chapter 11, angular kinematics. We're talking about the form or technique of angular motion. Um, we're going to about a few examples and finish the chapter off right now. When we're comparing linear versus angular motion, we can convert between them. We might talk about curvilinear distance or the distance traveled by the tip of a bat as it moves through the air. Perhaps the toes as they're traveling through a cartwheel or a round off. Uh, you might talk about the fingertips as it's traveling along an arc to release a baseball. That is the curvilinear distance. Uh, that is S, and that equals the radius uh, times phi. Um, when we're talking about uh, velocity, we can convert velocity into the radius times omega. Um, when we talk about acceleration, this is a little bit more complicated. The conversion for acceleration really happens in two parts. Um, we are talking about the acceleration along the path or the tangential acceleration along the tangent of the curve. And we are talking about the acceleration perpendicular to the path towards the center, which is referred to as the radial acceleration. So we have both the tangential acceleration along the path and the radial acceleration towards the center. In a baseball bat, this would be the acceleration of the tip of the bat along the path along the curvilinear motion uh, versus the radial acceleration would be the acceleration towards the hands, towards the body. A golf club would be the same thing. You'd have tangential acceleration, the tangent acceleration of the head of the club versus the radial acceleration of the shaft towards the body in order to maintain a smooth motion. Um, this is important uh, to understand. When we go back to curvilinear distance, this is to establish that the further out you go on the baseball bat, the more curvilinear distance that piece of the bat has traveled. So the piece of the bat in the hands will not travel as far of a curvilinear distance as with the piece at the tip of the bat. Why? Because though the angle of motion, angle of displacement is the same, the angle of distance, excuse me, the radius um, has actually, excuse me, the radian has actually uh, been greater. So we're going to talk about curvilinear distance as the distance traveled, two points on the same object in a motion of angle. They may travel the same angle, but the distance traveled might be completely different curvilinearly. Velocity we've covered. Acceleration has two pieces. Uh, the equation for acceleration is the tangential acceleration, or the AT equals R times alpha. And the radial acceleration, the AR, equals velocity squared over R. Um, a few quick examples about the difference between the two types of acceleration. A bat um, is one in order for you to be able to hold on to the bat, you must have both tangential acceleration, the acceleration of the bat through the swing, and a radial acceleration in, in order to hold on to it. I've already described that in a golf club. Um, the shoulder motion, as it's throwing, must have both tangential acceleration of accelerating the ball or the object in the hand, whether it's a football or a baseball. Uh, it also has to have the radial acceleration towards the shoulder. This is the purpose of uh, some of the muscles of the shoulder. Go ahead and pause the video for a few seconds and talk with your group about uh, whether the muscles of the shoulder are contributing more greatly to tangential acceleration or radial acceleration. I want you to divide between the extrinsic muscles and the intrinsic muscles of the shoulder. Go ahead and pause the tape and, and speak about that. So we might talk about the intrinsic muscles of the shoulder uh, often we can talk about the rotator cuff as creating a radial acceleration, uh, keeping the head of the humerus connected to the glenoid uh, cavity versus the global muscles like latissimus dorsi or the deltoid muscle or trapezius, um, triceps or biceps as moving the arm with more tangential acceleration. Um, those fit nicely tangential and radial with a discussion of intrinsic and extrinsic muscular control. Uh, that will be uh, continued throughout different areas of the body. Um, and a final example is of, of uh, angular acceleration would be a flip. Uh, you're able to manipulate a flip. It's easiest to see this with, say, a diver, a high platform diver, or a figure skater, or a gymnast who's able to manipulate the speed of, or, of their, um, or the velocity of their angular motion 
by changing the overall radius of their motion, by compressing their body, tucking their body together, extending their body uh, long, by manipulating the, uh, the overall radius of that motion, you're able to quickly change acceleration from tangential acceleration, the speed of the flip, into radial acceleration, which is the speed towards the center of the path. This has been the completion of all three parts of chapter 11. Uh, I expect there are a lot of questions. I expect you to review all three sections as needed. Uh, make sure you're returning to linear kinematics to talk about the first order of distance displacement, the second order of speed velocity, the third order of acceleration. You will see some consistent themes throughout both chapters. Good luck.